three, two, one. <laughs> This video brought to you by Green Man Gaming. Green Man Gaming, get yourself something nice this holiday season because you deserve it. But make sure to use our link. Oh, audience, Hunter, welcome back to Headhunter Space Program, where we left off. Welcome to Pole! <laughs> Uh, this is the smallest jewel moon, the Julian moons, the smallest of the Julian moons, and the outermost of the Julian moons. Uh, right now, communication, we have direct line of communication bouncing off of Julcom, I believe. Nope. It's just lined up really good. That's a really powerful transmitter, though. So... We are ready to go. Uh, I'm just, I just need to do a couple of final checks on the cargo. Make sure everything is there. You may remember we forgot some things. We're looking pretty good here. Yep. Uh, well, I, okay, final check, because I actually didn't pay attention to what everything was. Two transmitter dishes. Good. A third transmitter dish, that's all power and panels and stuff. And over here should be the science. Yes. One experiment control station, an ionographer, a weather... Analyzer. Brought in anyway, it's standard issue. The Goob ED mon monitor, also known as the loudest piece of science equipment on the ship and in the solar system. Okay, we're ready to go. So long, Spider. Go get him, Spider. Engage RCS. Beginning undocking thruster fire. Powering up. LV-N atomic rocket motors. This will be our landing stage. We are online. Okay. Now we need to pick the landing site. Ideally, somewhere on the bright side of the planet. Planetoid. We're going to orbit for a little bit. And then we will commence a deorbit burn. I think we just lost sight of Pegasus. Stand by. We definitely just lost sight of Pegasus. All right, Pegasus, we'll see you um, whenever. This valley looks like something. <laughs> We're going to make an attempt to land over there. I will take the, I will take the controls myself today. So controlling from here uh for some reason it won't let me aim these things. Engage smart ASS. Okay, now with that, once again, control from there. Give the engines just a little bit of a burn. 
Yeah, we have lost all readout on retrograde anything, actually. It's not good. That's not good. Oh, it's... It was on target mode the whole time. Okay. Smart ASS is no longer needed. All right, prepare for descent. Look at that. That is really brown. That's crazy. What's the biome map for this? Wow. <laughs> it's a very interesting biome map. Very, very interesting biome map. Okay. Altitude from surface, 11,000. Uh, wait a Wait a second. Stand by. What the hell is that frame rate? Pegasus is back in view. Hello. Are we on a collision course? That is a negative, but this is an interesting turn of events, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, Pegasus. We are on our way down to the surface. Look at that. <laughs> We are on our deorbit burn, and <laughs> that's incredible. They should take pictures of us. <laughs> uh, I would like a crew report. Um, yeah, space near pole. Actually, I'll tell you what. I got us an even better idea. At 10K, we will do it. All right, speeding up now. Easy now. Gonna ha gonna want to start thinking about a d about uh, deceleration. Okay, crew report. Overwrite. Still space near pole. Okay, stand by on that crew report. Adjusting, we're gonna try to get into this valley here. Easy. Easy. This is actually the closest I can zoom in. <laughs> Not so, don't burn so much that we uh, end up going back up into orbit. Okay. Big burn right here. Bring us down to like 50. Again, we're trying to get into this valley. The lowlands, as it were. Okay, that's good. That's good, stop right there. Once again, overwrite the crew report. Still space near pole. Coming down at 52. T plus 46 minutes, coming down at 61. 5400, coming down at 62. Aiming for right around there. Right in between those hills. Something flat. Something real flat. Preferably at the bottom of a ditch or something. 4,400, coming down at 51. Okay, stand by. 
We're going to try something well, a little bit interesting, honestly. I think we could kill all of our forward momentum. Start D cell. We have shadow on the surface. Oh my god. We may want to start burning more. Coming down at 29. Easy there. The biggest problem will be if we accidentally fling ourselves back into orbit. As it stands, it looks like we'll be touching down right above the cliffside. Right at the base of the cliff. Right around here. Exactly where I was aiming. I am not seeing terrain scatter. I was told there would be a lot of it. Unless this is an extremely scarce region for terrain scatter. Never mind, I found it. What? Oh my god. There are a lot of boulders down there. And we are about to be down among them. <laughs> 700 feet coming down at 18. Plenty of gas, plenty of gas. We have over half a tank here. Just hang in there. We have enough to land, go back up, come back down, and go back up again. Easy. Cut there. We've basically cut our forward momentum. Now it's just a straight drop. I can't zoom in any further than that. <laughs> Once again, I can't zoom in any further. Oh my god, they're everywhere! Holy shit! Two fifty coming down at eight. Ideally, we want to be below five. Easy. Lights have started illuminating the surface. Looks like we're going to come down right in between this bunch right here. Easy. Three point eight, three point seven. Ease up. A little bit higher on the throttle. Coming down at 2.321. Coming down at 2. Coming down at 1.89. Coming down at 2. Easy. Coming down right on top of a little bit of a hill. Easy, easy. I want us to come down a little bit slower than this. Just a little bit. Okay, don't burn so much that we end up going back into space. Contact! Shut down! Ooh. Very gentle. Very gentle. Okay, so... Immediate observation I'm seeing here. RCS is actually trying to straighten out the... SAS is actually trying to straighten out the rocket. Shut down SAS systems. We are on pole. And there are very pointy rocks everywhere. I'm not sure which ones the rover can scan. I think there's one over there. There's something right there. Yeah, right there. Look at the little guy. 
See that little guy? This is the f this is the weirdest one so far. <laughs> this is the weird this is the weirdest rocks I've ever seen on any Kerbal outing. Okay, I'm gonna want you to uh Is there any way we can lock the suspension on those? Extend the ladder. Extend the ladder. Main ladders have been extended. Activating the main antenna. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, all ladders are deployed. What do you think, guys? How about we have Dave be the first person on pole? <laughs> Let's give him a shot. What do you say, Dave? Head on down that ladder there. This is nuts. These are some crazy fucking rocks. I've never seen anything like this. They've, like, we've seen rocks, absolutely, but they've never been this pointy. How do you think they got like this? Also, that is, uh, that is, uh, one very far leap to Jewel. But it's a much lesser leap to get back home. How's that? I thought of it because Pole is the outermost moon, and it actually might take more Delta V to burn, oh, to burn closer to Jewel than it would be to escape Jewel. That's beautiful, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, nice work, Dave. <laughs> All right. Our next order of business is I got to take this RCS tank and this RCS tank. And we got to fuel the rover because we unfueled it so that Joffke could ride could uh, ride on back with us. Because Joffke was an idiot who just... Whoops. Because Joffke was an idiot that decided, oh, I'm going to hop on Bop. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, now we could get that crew report. Paul's Lowlands. Keep the data. All right. Time to deploy our second... And last, rover. I'm hoping that'll help stabilize the lander at least a little bit. All right, easy now. We had to take it easy with this thing on Bop as well. <laughs> Control from there. Go ahead and activate your fuel tank. Engage your RCS thrusters. All four of them. RCS thrusters engaged. Turnover is a go. That's all she needs. That's really all she needs. It's really as simple as that. Hit the brakes. Very good. Very good. Now I want full traction control on all four wheels. Let's see how she did. Uh, whoops. Okay, first of all, take it easy on the thrusters. Uh... 
We barely have control of the car. Barely. This is the lowest gravity the Too Smart has ever operated in. Ever! Like, this planetoid has less gravity than Minmus. Like, this is rough for the thing. Really rough. Let's do some mystery goo observations. Okay. Nothing crazy. Gravity. Landing on the planet has allowed for highly detailed scans of the interior gravity on pole. The, ex the seismic data? Vibrations reflect off the jagged structures inside the moon. Jagged structures? That's interesting. No atmosphere pressure is detectable on pole. Absolute zero. Look at this! Look at these rocks! <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Dave. Do your thing. Raise the flag. Get us a flag up. Mm hmm. Another planet conquered by the Headhunter Space Program. Uh, we're gonna name this the uh, the Hal Lowlands. The Hal Lowlands because his name is Dave, and in all capital le letters. Another planet conquered by the head of the space program. <laughs> Can you shine your light on that, uh, Dave? Just, just shine your light on that. There you go, Dave. <laughs> okay, uh, Jofke, I need you outside. You're the daredevil of the crew. You'd think that'd be Jeb, but it's Jofki. Let's face it, it's Jofki. Wow. D disgustingly maneuverable. Yeah, that, 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 that's the maneuvering. That's the jetpack for you. Wow. We'll set up here. Right over here. <laughs> All right, we'll get some power going first. Fantastic. Now, Dave, gonna gonna need to find the uh, science control module. Do you know where that is? As a matter of fact, you do! Look at you! Hey! First try. Well done, Dave. He's like, I, I, I checked the inventory. I know we need this thing. <laughs> I know what we need. <laughs> you really don't need those lights on, by the way. All right, and that's only the second loudest part here. <laughs> Let's see, this is communications. What we really need is the science parts. Okay, so comm pieces are all on this side of the lander. Let's get the ionographer up and running. Joffkey, you'll go get another uh, power module. Yeah. 
Right. The ionographer. So we can measure the ionosphere. Fantastic. Uh, Jofki! 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 Okay, uh... <laughs> 4.62 uh, jetpack propellant remaining. Let's get another uh, radioisotope thermoelectric generator up, up and running. I'll double the power output, which is already four. We always go overkill on these uh, camps. Additional power is operational, which means Dave can keep planting more science mods. And don't worry, Jebediah is gonna jump out here pretty soon. Okay, now the loudest piece. Don't worry, I have a special task in mind for Jebediah. This is the loudest science machine. This, the goo analyzer. God, that part's really loud. <sighs> ah! <laughs> loud uh, the uh, passive seismometer and it's really good given the internal structure of this particular moon I have reason to believe that there's an under planet that or it's a hollow planet it could be hollow And this thing is so sensitive, it can detect when a Kerbal lands next to it. Let's see here. Uh, we're looking good. Uh, Jofki, go get a transmitter up and running. I think jetpacks are going to be our main means of uh, moving around. The gravity here is so damn low, and it's so damn bad. I think we'll have two transmitters off on this side. Okay. It is powered. One second. Job key. Hang on. Position yourself in front of the I think we are now online with the network. We might need to boost the signal with another transmitter. Ugh. 3.7 fuel remaining. Haven't even used half of our of our EVA fuel. We do, however, have to deploy all of these science modules. I don't care if there's no weather on this planet. We need a weather station. So here's the weather station. We brought it. Uh. 
analyzing. There is no wind. Experiment situation invalid. <laughs> Science rate still 100% though. We might catch a tiny, tiny bit of wind. Just a nitty bitty wind. <laughs> That's all we're looking for is an itty bitty 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 bit of wind. <laughs> That's all we need is an itty bitty 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 wind. And it'll justify the, um, couple mil we spent on another science station. <laughs> this is the other transmitter. There is a third transmitter. Uh, is it gonna rotate? Guess not. I was kinda hoping we'd be able to use these as, like, ground relays, but... That's... bigger hardware. Like, we would... It, it, it's just not worth it to build a ground relay. It just makes loads more sense to have an orbital relay. It's also cheaper and easier. All right, point that at the sun. You're gonna wanna spin all the way around. Three point twenty nine fuel remaining. Don't even worry about it, Jeffke. Where's the rest of your equipment? You have one more solar panel and one more dish. And that'll be the camp. That'll be camp. Science camp. We gotta get some of this stuff up to the Mun base. It's this one, yes. And that is the final transmitter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exactly eight. And that will be our science base. Fantastic. All right, next order of business. We have like a mountain of science to do. So I want a scientist's opinion on this. Dave, what do you think? Wanna do an EVA report? Everywhere you look appears the planet is sharp. You don't think you want to sit down or fall on anything. How about a surface sample? After conducting sample after conducting samples of the surface, you determine with a high certainty that pole is not, in fact, made of pollen. This will cause quite the stir back home, and the rocket is sliding down the hill because the gravity is too damn low. Can we stop that? Uh, time warp makes everything jump in the air. Okay. Now we know that. We also did not land at that angle. Hold on. Hold on one second. Stop falling over. You, hold it. Hold the rocket. Sir, it went right through me. God damn it! <laughs> ah, 
The car! Give me the car! Okay, get, get, get me the car. Ugh. She's really slow to accelerate on this planet. We need really high traction control, but... I think we can ease off just to give her some speed. That rocket's gonna roll right over our fucking camp at this rate. Why is it so slow? Tell you what, mechanical jeb, rover control. Uh, I need you to, uh... Take this thing, cap its speed at point four, and go with speed two cruise control. Dave, I need you to intercept the rover. Get in the chair. Okay, that might give us more control. Of course, the rocket is already rolling too far down the hill to save the science base. Pull us up right over here underneath this leg. If we can slow it down, that should give us enough time to do some science around here. Oh, take it easy. It's like a landing chalk. <laughs> that is not holding well, but it is holding, which is great because our atomic rocket engines are exactly <laughs> above our radioisotope thermoelectric generators now. And this thing is gonna keep going down the hill until we get, like, all the way down the hill. <sighs> Jeb, you gotta do something, man. Hang on. Damn it, is there any way you could just use SAS to keep this thing from going everywhere? And you're tipping over the rover. You're tipping over my car. You, you, you've tipped it. Oh, boy. Well, we gave that a good try, didn't we? This is the biggest problem so far. <sighs> Kerbal engineering at its finest. Our fucking landers slide down cliffs. <laughs> so they slide down these gentle slopes. The lander's not heavy enough. Even though we haven't even used half our fuel. And the central tank is still very much full. God, this thing was overkill. This will get us back to Pegasus and then some. Normally I just leave the landers in orbit around the planets as, like, relays. This will become the spider relay. Because it's got that big dish. And the little dish. Now I remember why we put that little dish on there. All right. Jofki's like, let me handle this, Jeb. Don't you have other things to do? And Jeb is like, you're right. I must fulfill my duty as Jebediah Kerman. And I must fly! All right, Jeb's going to look for rocks. And he 
almost smashed my solar panel. Look at this. You could jetpack through here and it'd be like an obstacle course. This is terrific. There's a good looking rock right there. Look at that little guy. What are you? Little tiny rock. Let's see. That is, in fact, a different color from all the other rocks. And it's shiny as well. Where did you come from? I need a rover. This one is not grabbable. Let's see here. Breaking ground, surface features, surface feature finder. Apparently there's something right there. Interesting. Very interesting. All these little rocks. That's a shiny. Uh, that's another shiny rock right there. It's mostly these shiny rocks, but that looks like something. Oh, no, wait, that's what, that's Jeb. Jeb's just standing on the thing. Ideally, I don't want to drive very far. I think this is the only surface feature are these tiny rocks. These tiny rocks of fascinating composition. Where did you come from, tiny rocks? Stand by. And Dave will be right there. Where did Jeb go? <laughs> He's over there. Hey, Jeb, coming your way. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's just gonna have a hard time of it. I was gonna say bring our speed to two. But the brakes might have an even harder time. Watch out for that engine. Ugh. I was trying to make a beeline straight for him, but we're uh, we're gonna end up dodging rocks anyway. This is. Bad. <laughs> like, this is the most speed I can get out of the car. It's going so slow, it's actually auto saving. It's like, oh, you stop? Okay. Let me just do a quick save. <laughs> I got an idea. <laughs> We're controlling from here, right? We are now. The turbo is now an essential part. So, RCS disabled in the back, in the front. Actually, you know what? Front wheel drive. Let's do that. Because we've been going off a of four wheel drive, but this is just so we can preserve some mono propellant while moving across the surface. It's working! And we have... Minimal drain on the thrusters! Oh, God! That is fantastic. We do have to remember to turn it off before we turn, though. Try to get some speed control going. Slower down. 
She's holding a 2.5, which is good, but that's a little too fast for this gravity. Yeah, that's a little too fast. She's down at 2.4! Oh. Okay, the brakes help immensely. We're gonna re we're gonna reapply the traction control. Traction control back online. Yeah, it's gonna be a slow drive over to Jebediah over there. This is crazy looking. My god. And these things are huge. Wow. I'm going to have a look here, see if there's uh any other types of science. 0.9 added the biomes. A rover is difficult to drive on the surface because of the uneven terrain and low gravity. Yeah, it can't get any traction off. We have to maintain this ridiculously slow speed. At least nothing's too far from the lander. Honestly, we don't even need the car here. We could just fly over, but we need the arm. <laughs> that's that's not something we can carry. We do need the arm in order to do some scanning. How did they get like this? Atmospherics wouldn't do atmospherics wouldn't do anything like this and it doesn't even have an atmosphere. And atmospherics are the only thing that could probably do something like this. Color palette, the inside of a person's nose. <laughs> yeah, the planet's color palette, inside of a person's nose. <laughs> okay, uh, you're gonna want to start breaking now. Because, like, holy shit! Jeb's like, oh my god, you're coming in too fast. You're coming in too fast, you're gonna hit it. All right, this is the subject for our science experiments today. Jeb, you're gonna wanna move. I don't wanna shoot you with a laser. Where is Jeb? There's Jeb. Oh, uh, Jeb went airborne. All right, uh, can you operate that from... I don't think Jeb can, but our scientist can. Uh, so leave seats. You gotta grab all the science out of the rover anyway. It looks like sulfur. Laser might make it explode. That's a deep sample. The huge rock spires of pole already defy all of logic. Perhaps if we could learn how these particular fragments broke apart, we could also discover how they were able to form at all. Your scan has collected all the detail possible. Congratulations. 
Good, because we just killed the rover power. Take the data. I'm not entirely sure we should keep moving this car around. It takes a really long time to get her up to speed. It has performed admirably in the past. It just... It cannot handle this low gravity. You stuck? A little bit. Go ahead, board the seat. Can't board the seat while not standing still. Oh no, you are stuck. Time warp. Oof. Board the tr board the car. There you go. All right. Meanwhile, uh, Jofki is trying very hard to get the ship under control. This is Jofki trying to control the ship. Uh, we're about to hit a giant rock, actually, so that's gonna be fun. Honestly, if these things had collision, it would hold us in place. Which would do me a favor. Just making sure we got all of the science equipment. Every last bit. Well, boys on the ground. Soon enough, the uh, lander is just going to come to you. That or it's going to hit this little lip right here and finally stop moving. Jesus. Look at the terrain on this planet. Look at that mountain. Look at this. That right there might be a big old impact crater. That or... Dare I say it, Pole might have some plate tectonics going on. But in a manner very different from ours. Instead of floating on the liquid mantle, it could be floating on something else. I still believe that Pole has a hollow interior. Uh, show me the gravity data again. Yeah. Joff key. EVA for me. Let go. Jump. EVA report. Just above the lowlands. Fantastic. Like, in terms of every single piece of science, we're getting all of it. Yep, we got it. Now, using the ship as a center point, Let's have a look at a couple more rocks here. I, actually, you know what I can do? I can search pole breaking ground. Uh, pole breaking ground. Let's have a look. Surface features. Pole only has the yellow stones, but apparently they can be picked up by a Kerbal, so let's give that another shot. So, not only are we scanning the crap out of it with our laser gun, we're taking it with us. Jab, you don't have anything in your bag. Here we go. Pick up yellow stone. Ooh, 
He's got a little pick. Pull's distinctive color shows up particularly well in these chunks of stone left across the surface. Could they be more than just stone? Perhaps some new type of cheese aged over millions of years. Return this to have it analyzed and gain all information about it. Yes. All right. I'm gonna... I don't know if I want to take the rover back to the ship. I'll tell you what, though. This video has gone on long enough, and there might actually be more work ahead of us than I originally thought. So I'm going to leave this off here. That's Headhunter Space Program this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button really hard with your head. As for me, I might have a dumb idea or not. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try it out next week. Come and fly away with me Come and fly away with me Come and fly away with me Come, come and fly away with me Come and fly away with me Come and fly away with me Come and fly away Hey guys, it's Hunter. I just wanted to say uh, it's been a pleasure flying with you in 2020, and I'm sorry 2020 was such a crappy year, even though it's really none of our fault that it was such a crappy year. Uh, it's Christmas on Pole. Uh, this is actually the last Kerbal video we're doing this year. Um, so, Merry Christmas from the Pegasus crew. Uh, have a Happy New Year. We do have episodes lined up for uh, January 1st, uh, which will be uh, us heading back aboard Pegasus, and uh, after that, we are going home. And I have to film all of those tonight, because uh, turns out the update comes out tomorrow.